Welcome to our video on graphing absolute value inequalities. So what's the basic idea when we're graphing an inequality, right? How do we deal with that and think about that intuitively? Well, we can start by looking at a simple example, something like x is bigger than 5. When we graph this on a number line, all we're doing is setting up a line, putting the number 5 on it, and graphing every x value larger than 5. So x could be 6, 7, any decimal increment in between, x is all of these things. Well, in general, when you graph the absolute value, let's say I have, if I said to you, we'll graph the absolute value of x where it equals 5. When we start with this idea, we get a picture, right, where x can equal two values. Well, x could equal 5, because in that case, if we think about what absolute value means, it means the distance from 0. Well, 5 is 5 away from 0. But x could also equal negative 5, right? because that's also five units away. So one thing to think about right away and to notice the absolute value is you get more than one answer because you're evaluating distance from zero and there's both negative and positive values to look at. And this leads us into graphing inequalities in general. Right? This allows us to get started in, in what I think is an exciting variation of graphing inequalities. So what we start to see happening here is that you'll encounter problems that say something like x, the absolute value of x, right, is less than 5. And you might see things that say the absolute value of x is greater than 5. Now intuitively what this means is that the distance of your x variable, right, the distance from 0 has to be less than 5. So it's less than 5 units from 0. And effectively what it's saying is give me every number that's less than 5 units away from the number 0. And here what we're saying is the opposite, right? The distance, the absolute value of x, the distance from 0 is now greater than 5. So now we, we want to get every number whose distance from 0 is greater than 5 units. So it's a greater from 5 units from 0. And you can almost imagine even with the, at the specifics here what these graphs will look like. With the absolute value of x is less than 5, right? If I just draw a simple number line down here, right? Here's 0. And every number that's less than 5 units from 0, right? That range is from negative 5 all the way up to 5. So we have two open number, two open circles here, and the x could be anything in between here, because all of these numbers in here are all less than five units from zero. On the other hand, over here, we have in this number line, where x is everything that has a distance from zero greater than five, right? We set up our two boundaries. Anything less than negative five and anything more than positive five will be more than five units from zero. And this leads us right into the whole concept, this whole splitting and, and what these graphs will look like for the graphing of absolute value. In, in this case, when distance is less than a certain value, you'll get a line enclosed by two endpoints. And here, where the distance is greater than 5, right, you'll get two lines right, where both distances are greater than certain amounts. And in this case, you would say x is bigger than 5 or x is less than negative 5, one or the other. Here you would say x is less than 5 and, right, x is greater than negative 5. It's closed in, the, in this, in this, right, in this line within these boundaries. Now if you happen to see less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that'll just change our definition slightly and it'll change our endpoints and we'll fill them in as circles. Now this leads us into some other examples which I'll cover right now in this video. I think you'll enjoy them. Well, what if you said, I want to graph the absolute value of x plus 3 where it's less than 5? What does that mean? Well, this means that you're looking at, right, you're looking at a values of x where x plus 3's distance from 0 is less than 5, right, because absolute value refers to distance. So we want to know what values of x can you plug into this equation where your distance when you add 3 to x is still 
less than 5, where that distance from 0 is still smaller than 5. So there's two ways to look at this. On one hand, you could say, okay, in order for x plus 3 to be less than 5, for that distance from 0 to less than 5, then x plus 3 itself has to equal stuff that's less than 5. Right? How could the distance from 0 be less than 5 if x plus 3 was greater than 5 away from 0? For example, if x plus 3 equals 6, then the distance from 0 would be 6, right? And that wouldn't work. What else could happen? Well, as you know, the absolute value, if I took the absolute value of 5, that means I'm 5 away from 0, and the answer is 5. But also, if I took the absolute value of negative 5, then that's also equal to 5. Because in both cases, these two numbers are 5 away from 0. And that's what the absolute value is measuring. So not only could this x plus 3 expression be less than 5, but all it also has to happen is that it could deal with a negative value, right? x plus 3 could be greater than negative 5. And the reasoning here that we might encounter in, in other cases, once I've changed this value to a negative, I've kind of switched the whole value setup of this inequality. So I must also change the direction, right, of our inequality. This goes back to a simple idea where if you have two numbers, let's say, I don't know, we're looking at 5, right, positive 5 and negative 5. Well, positive 5 is greater than negative 5, but if I multiply both sides by a negative value, I get negative 5 and positive 5, and I reverse the order of the value in our inequality. And that's what's happening here because I'm reversing the value of this 5 to negative 5. So anyway, in both cases I solve for x. So here I'll subtract 3 on both sides and what happens is x is greater than what? Well negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. And here if I subtract 3 from both sides what's going to happen? Well these 3's cancel out and then I have 5 minus 3 or 2 so x is less than 2. Or I should say and excuse me x is greater than negative 8. And what does all this mean? This seems like a random process almost. Well, let's make a graph of this, and I think we'll have a better understanding of what's going on. So x is less than 2. So I'll, I'll mark 2 here. And x is greater than negative 8. So here's 0, maybe negative 8's over here. Well, if you can imagine that interval, right? Every number greater than 8, I go this way. And every number less than 2, I go this way. Eventually, these, these two things will meet. And this number line, right, this little range of numbers are the numbers I can plug into our original equation here and still have a distance, right, an absolute value, a distance from zero that's less than five. And this makes sense, even if we're, we're not thinking it makes sense yet. For example, let's say I pick one. If I plug one into our original equation, I get the absolute value of one plus three is less than five. Well, 1 plus 3 is 4, and the absolute value of 4 is equal to 4. And that's great, because that's less than 5. That's what we're trying to do here. On the reverse side, I can pick negative 7. Well, negative 7, if I plug that in, I get negative 7 plus 3. The absolute value of that, what's that equal to? Well, negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, a distance that's still less than 5. So this range of numbers here, right, this range of x values, that's what we're plotting here, are the x values I can plug into our equation and get a distance that's less than 5, a distance, that, a distance from 0 that's less than 5. So if I reverse this inequality here, we'll see some different things will, will actually happen. So let me try another problem. What if I have the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 5? Right before we had less than 5, now we have greater than 5. Well, now it means that our expression x plus 3 has to have a distance from 0 that's larger than 5 units. So this encompasses two different uh, equations again. In the one hand, x plus 3 can be greater than 5. On the other hand, x plus 3 has to be less than 
negative 5. And if you think about that intuitively, right, on the positive side of things, if I just sketch a little number line here, here is 0 and here is 5, right? Everything that's going to be bigger than 5 will have an absolute value, a distance from 0, that's greater than 5. So over here, the reverse is happening. Right here is 0, here is negative 5. To get numbers that have an absolute value greater than 5, which way would I go now? Well, I wouldn't go to the right because these numbers would be closer to 0. So I have to reverse everything and go to the left. Right, Numbers like negative 6 and negative 7, all those numbers have an absolute value that's more than 5 units away. So we're looking at numbers that are less than negative 5. And if that's not convincing enough, just remember that we, re we reversed 5 to negative 5, so we also need to reverse the direction of our inequality. Right? That, that, that's happening here as well. So all we have to do now to figure this out is solve each inequality. So on the one hand, we have x plus 3 is greater than 5. On the other, x plus 3 is less than negative 5. We subtract 3 from both sides. And in this case, I get x is greater than 2. And here, I subtract 3 from both sides. And I get what? Well, x is less than negative 8. So these are the x values I would plug in in order to get distances greater than 5 units away from 0. And if I just set up a number line, let's look how this is different. Right? x is greater than 2. So here is 2. So x is everything this way. Or x is everything that's less than negative 8. Right? We have choices here. x just can't be anything in between. And you can test that out. For example, if I plug, let's say, 0 in to my original equation, I get the absolute value of 0 plus 3. And that's equal to 3, which is not bigger than 5. Right? 3 is not bigger than 5. This is not true. So x can't be anything between negative 8 and 2, but any number that's less than negative 8 or greater than 2 will work in this inequality. And this happened here because our absolute value was greater than 5. Whereas on the other hand, our absolute value right, was less than 5. So that might make a graph like this. Those are some things to think about when we're graphing inequalities.